Hi there, my name is Rob Power. I'm an instructional developer and a mobile learning researcher. For the past two years, I've also been a member of the executive of the International Association for Mobile Learning. Today I'm here to talk about some recent research that I've been doing with my colleagues Dean Crystal and Belinda Gimbert from Ohio State University, Robin Bartoletti from Texas Women's University, and Whitney Kilgore from iDesign EDU. What we've been looking at is using the Mobile Teacher Sense of Efficacy Scale to evaluate and optimize M-Learning professional development. Let me start by telling you how our research came about. It all started here in Doha, Qatar at M-Learn 2013. That's where I chaired a panel discussion on integrating tablets and other mobile technologies into K-12 and higher education systems. That's me there at the podium. Our research started after comments made by this man, Dr. Muhammad Ali, one of the founding directors of the International Association for Mobile Learning. I asked Dr. Ali a question, and he in essence threw down the gauntlet for me on what would become the focus of my life for the next year and a half, my doctoral dissertation research. I asked Dr. Ali what he saw as the single greatest barrier to wider spread adoption of mobile learning in K-12 and higher education systems. Here's a summary of his response. Anyone who attended the MLEARN 2013 panel discussion will remember that he actually started off by saying people, people are the problem. But Dr. Ali went on to explain that it was their lack of confidence in their own abilities to use mobile technologies and mobile learning strategies that was holding them back. That sense of confidence in your own abilities is called your perception of self-efficacy. What we know about teachers' perceptions of self-efficacy is that they can affect their willingness to experiment with new technologies and new teaching strategies. And we also know that lack of training in the pedagogical considerations for using specific technologies in the classroom can have a negative effect on teachers' perceptions of self-efficacy. We've also heard Dr. Rick Kenny at MLEARN 2010 in Malta tell us that there really hasn't been much research done into self-efficacy in a mobile learning context. So we're faced with a problem. Teachers aren't confident in their abilities with mobile learning. That lack of confidence is a barrier to their willingness to experiment with mobile learning. They need training in mobile learning pedagogy to help overcome that barrier. And there hasn't been much, if any, research into these problems. That's where these people, Dean Crystal and Belinda Gimbert came into the picture. Dean and Belinda had already approached me about working with them to develop some professional development resources for Ohio teachers and teacher training students based on an instructional design framework I developed called CSAM. CSAM is the Collaborative Situated Active Mobile Learning Design Framework. Its purpose is to promote self-efficacy with mobile learning by providing teachers with scaffolding for instructional design decisions. Ohio State University was also the birthplace of a survey instrument called the Teacher Sense of Efficacy Scale, which was developed in 2001 as a tool to measure teachers' perceptions of confidence in their abilities to perform common teaching-related tasks. So we asked ourselves, could we adapt the TSES for a mobile learning context? And that's just what we did. I worked with Dean and Belinda to develop the MTSES or the Mobile Teacher Sense of Efficacy Scale. It measures teachers' perceptions of confidence on three subdomains, student engagement, instructional strategies, and classroom management. The MTSES mirrors the structure of the original TSES. It also contains the 24 original TSES scale questions, plus 14 questions from the original scale that have been modified to match a mobile learning context for a total of 38 questions. So it simultaneously allows us to compare teachers' perceptions of self-efficacy with mobile learning to their levels of confidence with common teaching tasks in general. I used the MTSES as the primary quantitative data collection instrument for my dissertation research. We developed and piloted a short micro MOOC or massive open online course around using the CSAM framework to plan, design, and build prototype mobile reusable learning objects. And we use the MTSES to measure the effects of the course on participants' perceptions of self-efficacy with mobile learning. 
The first thing that we did in my dissertation research was to compare the construct validity and reliability of the MTSES with the original TSES instrument. To do this, I followed the procedures laid out by Benton Borgi, who in 2006 developed the ITSES, a version of the TSES modified for an inclusion education context. Her reliability scores for the ITSES are also included in this comparison. You can see that the figures are pretty consistent across the board. So, confident in our new MTSES instrument, I examined how teachers' perceptions of self-efficacy with mobile learning change from the beginning of our new PD course to the end of the course. The blue bars here show us changes in participants' perceived confidence with common teaching tasks, the TSES scale. The orange bars illustrate the changes in their subdomain scores for the mobile learning scale, the MTSES. The line shows us the net change in the perceptions of self-efficacy with mobile learning after accounting for the effects of maturation. Teachers and education students who participated in the CSEM MOOC were, indeed, more confident in their abilities to integrate mobile learning strategies into teaching practice. That's where Robin Bartoletti and Whitney Kilgore come into the picture. Back in April of 2013, after I'd finished my doctoral coursework for the year, Robin and Whitney were involved in running a MOOC called Instructional Design for Mobile Learning. I was curious about MOOCs, and since the topic was the area that I was researching anyway, I signed up. Long story short, Robin and Whitney had been after me ever since IDML 13 wrapped up to team up with them for the next offering, whenever that might be. Well, the next offering came about in May 2015. Robin, Whitney, and I co-facilitated ID4ML. We revamped the course and integrated some of the materials from my CSAM MOOC. I also teamed up with Robin and Whitney, along with Dean and Belinda, to follow up on my dissertation research. ID4ML had a much larger participant pool with a far broader demographic base than the participants from the CSAM MOOC. So we set out with these research questions. We wanted to repeat our tests on the construct validity and reliability of the MTSES and use it to find out whatever we could about the effects of ID4ML on participants' perceptions of self-efficacy. As you can see, our reliability scores lined up pretty well with those that we obtained in my dissertation research and with those previously reported for the TSES and ITSES. So we turned our attention to overall trends in self-efficacy scores amongst participants in ID4ML. As you can see, the degree of change in scores on the nine-point scale was much smaller than the changes observed in the CSAM MOOC. And participants actually showed lower self-confidence on two of the three subdomains when we calculated for the effects of maturation. So what exactly did we see happening after participants completed the ID4ML MOOC? Well, they did feel more confident in their abilities to use mobile learning strategies to engage students, but they actually felt less confident in their abilities to design mobile learning instruction or to handle classroom management. One possible reason for the widely different results between CSAM and ID4ML MOOCs could be the design of the courses themselves. Both courses had similar durations and gave participants the opportunity to get hands-on experience with free mobile applications and tools. Both courses also introduced the CSAM Learning Design Framework. But that's where the similarities end. In the CSAM MOOC, participants focused on using the framework to put together real instructional design plans, build prototype learning objects based on their plans, and to evaluate the success of their prototypes. In ID4ML, participants were merely introduced to the framework. They were not actually required to come up with instructional design plans using the CSAM framework. Nor were they required to build prototype RLOs to meet the learning outcomes of a detailed plan. Obviously then, there was also no use of the framework to reflect on instructional design decisions. So, the MTSES results have shown us here exactly what Rick Kenny said would happen back at MLEARN 2010. Lack of training in the pedagogical considerations for the integration of a specific type of technology can have a negative impact upon teachers' perceptions of self-efficacy. Another possible reason for the differences in the results from the CSAM and ID4ML MOOCs could be participant demographics. 
We looked at a number of different demographics, including years of teaching experience, status in the education profession, geographic region, and gender. What stood out the most from our results was that participants who already had more years of teaching experience were more likely to see positive changes in their confidence with mobile learning. And the percentage of course participants who were either practicing K-12 or post-secondary teachers or teacher training students was much higher in the CSAM MOOC. We also saw some interesting results when we looked at gender in ID4ML. In terms of the average changes of the TSES and MTSES scales, females showed the greatest increase in confidence with common teaching tasks. Male participants showed greater increases in their MTSES scores or their confidence with mobile learning. When we calculated for the effects of maturation, we saw that female participants from ID4ML actually felt less confident with their abilities with mobile learning on all three subdomains. Male participants felt less confidence with classroom management, but showed slight increases in their perceptions of self-efficacy with student engagement and instructional strategies. We don't know why this is, and it's certainly something worth further investigation. So how can we make practical use of the findings from this research? The first area would be in making recommendations for the ID4ML course itself. The results tell us that we could refine the course to better meet participants' needs. For instance, we could integrate differentiated instruction for teachers who could benefit from spending more time on actual instructional design exercises and the evaluation of pedagogical decisions. We could also integrate more resources related to classroom management strategies for mobile learning. We could also use the MTSES results to make decisions about follow-up support and training for teacher participants. We can make some recommendations for further research. The CSAM and ID4ML MOOCs had different instructional designs and participant demographics. It would be valuable to do more comparison of results between groups with higher degrees of similarity. It would also be valuable to use a mixed methods approach like the one that I took in my dissertation research. The quantitative data collected with the MTSES can be triangulated and supplemented by using qualitative data, which can help us to get a better and fuller understanding of changes in participants' perceptions of self-efficacy. Finally, as a result of our research, we can make some recommendations for other mobile learning professional development planners. First, make sure you are targeting teachers' perceptions of self-efficacy. We know that these perceptions have a huge impact on M-learning adoption rates. Second, use the MTSES. Use it as a needs assessment tool right back in the PD planning stage. Use it to measure the effectiveness of your training once you implement it. Use the MTSES results to help you focus in on potential training program revisions and to guide decisions about follow-up training and support for teachers. To summarize this presentation, there is more and more discussion around the need to integrate mobile technologies and mobile learning practices into formal education. We know that pedagogy-focused training improves teachers' confidence with mobile learning and this increases the likelihood that they'll adopt mobile learning approaches. We also know that teachers who aren't confident in their abilities with mobile learning are less likely to experiment with or adopt it. And we know that there hasn't been enough research into perceptions of self-efficacy in a mobile learning context, but we've shown that the MTSES survey is a reliable research tool which can also provide professional development planners with useful insights into how their training is impacting teachers' confidence with mobile learning and how their training can better target perceptions of self-efficacy.